next 10 minutes, you'll learn how to find clients, how to price your services, how to deliver the services and ensure customer satisfaction, how to close a deal and how to upsell your services. Let's get started. Now there are various ways to find clients. I can tell you that personally, posting my work out there has worked best. I have tried cold outreach. I sent upwards of 10,000 messages. I tried different strategies, different scripts different apps i used a lot of automation i tried manually i tried personalizing i tried ai none of it really worked and it also costs a bunch of money to get all of these automating softwares and to find these leads but i will say that posting my work and posting content like this has helped because people see my content and instead of having to convince them that i'm good they just see that i'm good they come across me and then i've had people reaching out for help and i always try to give value for free i think this is a big thing if people ever ask me to fix a little issue i don't ask money for that i just do it because i know it'll take me a couple of seconds it will mean a lot to them and then a lot of them later come back to me because they've seen that i've helped them before without asking for anything in return and now they want to hire me because i've already provided value for them and now they'll take me over anyone else because i've already built that connection with them so that's something that i suggest building an audience start posting don't think about it too much if your work is good people are going to like it and connect with it so just start posting and just give value don't wait for people to come to you just give 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 and eventually you'll get back that genuinely has generated more sales for me than any other outreach method let me just say this ahead of time when you're talking to clients keep it casual don't try to put this extra professionalism because when you use that excessive uh, vocabulary you go over the top to sound like overly professional a lot of people just don't understand that language they don't understand all of these technical words that you're throwing at them because most clients they're not technical themselves so just keep it as simple as possible make it easy for them to understand the problem and how you're going to solve it don't try to use any complicated language showing past work whether it's on call or just sending them past work or just having it displayed on your profiles is essential because they need to see what kind of projects you've worked on in the past to be confident in you if you haven't worked with clients that's fine you can just make mock-up websites people don't mind that they just want to see that you can actually build it they don't care if you've built for other people for the most part let me just explain the actual process so usually when i do a website i first just get them on a call and i ask them a bunch of questions check the link in the description it has everything written down so you don't have to remember anything i just ask them what are their goals what are the current problems with their current website if they don't have a website what kind of results do you hope to get from your website is it getting more leads getting more sales just having people informed about your product each client has their own goal with the website so i make sure to address that you need to just confirm to them you're actually the right person so explain it doesn't have to be in detail generally explain how you're going to be doing stuff to have them confident that you can actually solve their issue otherwise they're just not really going to trust you other than that once you're on the call with them i suggest you write everything they say down and at the end just repeat everything that's been spoken to make sure you didn't misunderstand everything because again communication is key so if a client tells me their issue i write them down i make sure i understand them and then at the end of the call i just just read everything that I listed to them to make sure I understand but this also makes them feel heard because when you repeat everything and they see that you've actually listened and you take them seriously and they can trust you in delivering on your promise we also list out the scope so how many pages are we actually going to do once you read out that list ask them if they have any more questions if they do make sure to write them down address them and stuff like that and once everything is over just name the price and wait you want to base your price based on both the complexity of the design and the scope if you do 10 pages it's going to be priced differently than if you do five pages i also recommend pricing based on the client itself if you know that you're working with some content creator you're obviously going to charge them slightly less than a startup that you're working with because you know they have more money to spend you'll kind of get a feel of it as you start working with different people if you're a beginner i suggest going for lower prices and as time progresses you can start charging more and more but let's say i'm with a client on a call i'll just name the price shut my mouth and wait for them to answer once they answer they might say that's a bit too expensive let me think about that if they ask for a bit of a lower price i think usually it's not a bad idea to go a bit down just to close the sale because when you give people time to think about it after the call they're very much likely to just forget about it or find another option or whatever the reason is they might just not go with yourself so i suggest agreeing on a price on a call 
is the best way to go about it just from my personal experience so just negotiate you need to learn negotiation that's just a part of the game the more you do it the better you'll get at it and you'll understand what's the right thing to do and what's the wrong thing generally just come in confident don't be scared and you usually end up in a price range that is comfortable for you if you ever come across a price range that feels wrong then don't do it it's not going to be worth it uh, unless you're really desperate and you're a super beginner and you just want to get that first testimonial i wouldn't suggest settling for a price that's below your intended range uh, because usually you'll just get burnt out and it's not going to be worth it and you're going to feel miserable so don't do it in terms of the actual payment what i do is 50% upfront so before we even start the project they pay 50% of the full payment and then once I deliver the site they pay the other 50% so what I usually do is I work on the website on my end I don't even give them access to the project I just share the live link and once the website is done then I give them the remix link with my affiliate code they add it to their framer account then they add me as an editor on a free plan just to make the final changes and then they can publish the site if they want me to keep being an admin on the project then they can pay for an extra editor seat on framer if not they just remove me and the site is live and it's ready once you close the client you want to just hit them with a first draft depending on the website sometimes i give them just the general layout without any design just like the way it's going to be structured other times i just design the first section just so they kind of get a sense of what style i'm going for and the rest of the sections i'll keep kind of plain and if they approve it i'll keep designing the rest and if they don't then I keep iterating on the first section until they like what they see and then I build the rest of the site. Really depends on the project. Other than that, what I like to do is get on their preferred mode of communications. If they don't mind, I usually put them on something like Slack or Trello. But if they tell you that they prefer to talk through messages or to talk through emails, go where the client is most comfortable because while it might pull all of your clients in different platforms and it might be harder to keep track, the clients themselves feel the most comfortable communicating with you and that's what's the most important. You can then take all of the different platforms and just enable email notifications and then you'll get all of the messages in your inbox, which is what I do and then it's all kind of condensed in one place even though it's all from different platforms so it's not really a problem for me and you can also be more casual if it's on something like iphone messages or whatsapp or anything like that you don't have to always be formal it just makes the environment more fun to work in and i think that's very important when you're working with clients different people want different types of design so what i like to usually do is go on websites like pinterest and cosmos and any gallery get a bunch of pictures that match the description of what they tell me so let's say they want a modern website i go and i scour the web for modern looking websites not even ones that i built trying to get a sense of the aesthetic and i give them those images and then they tell me which one they like more which ones they like less and then i get a visual understanding of what style they want never copy anything that you see one for one but take experiences take that element from there and this element from here and combine it to make something unique that the client is going to like now it's really important to remember that what the client likes is not what you necessarily like so you really have to just enter your client's mind and their preferred aesthetic and match that to the best of your possibility abilities it's not uncommon for me to make something that I personally dislike visually, but it's just what the client wants. You need to remember that at the end of the day, you're serving the client, you're not serving yourself. So if the client says one way is better while you prefer the other, you need to just let go and do what the client says as long as it doesn't break design rules. Sometimes clients will ask for ridiculous stuff that you know will make the user experience bad. And that's when you jump in and you say, look, in my professional opinion, this is just not going to work and here's why and when you explain it like that 99.9% .9 of the time the client is going to actually understand why their opinion is wrong in terms of design and they'll go with what you say but other than that as long as it doesn't break any user experience or any design rule just go with the client's gut because at the end of the day you want them to be satisfied you're not the one who's going to be looking at the site 24 7 they are also when you're working time is of the essence i'm not saying rush your work but also do not take your time with it even if you don't feel like it's a hundred percent what they're going for if it's good enough just show them the concept let them give some input on it as long as you're replying fast because when you're replying fast the client can actually see that you're putting in the work if you just go weeks on end or days on end without showing anything and then only after a week have like this full website completed but it's actually not what they wanted then you really hurt yourself by having to reiterate and do all of that again and change to whatever the client wants and also the client felt out of the loop they stayed out of the entire process and while some clients might prefer to not really be involved in a project 24 7 
one, it's still good to just give them constant updates. They don't have to reply, but just show them that you're working. It makes them a lot more confident in your abilities and the work that you're putting in. If you see that the kind of project you're working on requires consistent maintenance, you can try to sell your clients on a monthly retainer of like kind of design maintenance. If they have a blog or something like that and they need constant tweaks every now and then, then you can try to sell them on that after you've already delivered the site because they are already confident in your work and you've already built a reputation. It's gonna be much easier to get that additional deal closed rather than trying to close two deals at once before you even started the work that's just kind of the process that i rinse and repeat i hope this has been helpful if you have any questions drop them down below